now. Okay, great. Thanks, Michael. So welcome everybody to the Oak Park Neighborhood Association's February 2022 meeting. Uh, we had an in-person meeting last month. Um, then <laughs> we've decided to go virtual again for, for public health reasons. So I appreciate those of you who were able to make time uh, for today's conversation. We're going to be not only uh, talking about 10 vacant lots in Oak Park uh, that council had a recent decision around um, and you know, we'll have a good conversation about potentially envisioning new uses for this land, but also uh, having our annual OPNA board elections. This is something that we do every February. Uh, we're excited to share that we have some new board members or new potential board members who are interested in, in serving uh, on, on our volunteer uh, board of directors. So um, really appreciate the time that all of you have provided and uh, given for, for this conversation tonight. So um, with that, let's jump right into intros. Um, so we'll, we'll do intros, then we'll hear from Council Member Chenier, then we'll have a, a open-ended conversation about the topic, the vacant lots topic, and then we'll try to end right at seven so we can do some community announcements and then jump into our, our elections. And I'll post a uh, agenda once we, once we start with our intros. So for intros, why don't you say your first and your last name and then just where you, know, where you live, whether it's in Oak Park or not, because I know we have some guests. So uh, my name is Adrian Wren. I'm current president of OPNA and I live on the corner of Fourth Avenue and 39th uh, in North Oak Park. Go to Michael Benjamin next. Thank you, Adrian. Michael Benjamin, uh, OPNA board member, and I'm in 95820. Go to Ann. Or it says Ann, but <laughs> Ann Mazur. <laughs> I, yeah, that's uh, that's my wife. I'm Eric Fay, and I'm the chair of the uh, Sierra Curtis Neighborhood Association's Neighborhood Concerns Committee. And uh, we like the idea of attending your meetings because you are our, uh, your neighbors and we're very interested in the topics that you're interested in. Thanks for coming. Go to council member Schneer. Thanks Adrian, Jay Schneer. I represent district five, which includes Oak Park and happy to be here tonight. Well. And Adrian, if I can, we have two other folks from the city, Alice and Joe, who's my chief of staff, uh, who is here tonight, and then Danielle Foster, who does housing for the city of Sacramento. Awesome. Great to have all of you here. Let's go to Joelle Tony next. Good evening, everyone. So good to see so many familiar faces. Opna has a packed house tonight. Um, so my name is Joelle, um, and many of you probably know me from either working with the city or working with local community gardens or working with Roberts Family Development Center. But here today, I'm representing um, the Sacramento Community Land Trust. Um, I am one of the co-directors and on the board, and I'm really happy that we're talking about all this stuff. Um, who do you want me to pass it to? I'm just going to go in order so it's easier okay. to track if you don't okay. mind. I, I was going to go to Cindy Curry next, if you want to unmute yourself, Cindy. And I know you're saying you had some, but there you go. Hey, there it is. All right. Hi, yes. My name is Cindy Curry. I do live in Oak Park. I'm a homeowner since uh, 2007. I live on 2nd Avenue uh, near 37th. And... Uh, I guess it's two of the lots. I thought it was just one lot because it only looks big enough to put one house on. But anyway, I live next door to one of the lots. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in uh, finding out and participating in keeping Oak Park uh, a good place to live. So thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Rose next. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Rose Cabral here. I am... Uh, I live in, in Tahoe Park, and I am here tonight as well to represent the Sacramento Community Land Trust. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And Jeffrey Fletcher. Hi, uh, I am Jeffrey Fletcher. I'm with the Fruit Ridge Career Center. We're a Sacramento Jobs Work Center here in Old Park on 44th Street. And um, I, of course, I know about your organization here, and I just wanted to come and listen and to, you know, represent Fruit Ridge. Thanks for being here. And Bishop Chris Baker. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Jay Chenier. 
Glad to be on here now that we are in District 5 from Franklin Boulevard. So I was invited to come on and see what's going on in the Oak Park area because now I am considered District 5. So I will be joining in on a lot of things that's going on in Oak Park. I look forward to it, Chris. Thank you, sir. Go to Dave Brown. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave Brown. I live in uh, North Oak Park. I've lived in Oak Park since uh, 2011. Awesome. Robin, your turn. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So nice to see you. I'm Robin Kelly Denton, and I'm a district representative for Assembly Member McCarty, who is your state representative. Um, I'm so happy to be here, see what's going on in the neighborhood, and say hi to all of you. We do have some upcoming events that I'm going to post in the chat. Um, tomorrow is Rosa Parks Day of Courage, which we're very excited about. There's going to be an event at the Capitol, and we're supposed to be getting a preview of the um, Obu bus, which is a historical replica of the bus that Rosa's Park um, sat on. So I will put that information in the chat, and I'll also put my contact information in the chat if you need any assistance with state agencies or have questions that our office can help with. You can get in touch with me for those. Thanks, Robin. Let's go to Kelsey Long. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kelsey. I live in 95817. I'm sandwiched between the law school and the Oak Park Market off the of 33rd by the Big Park. Um, I'm also the social worker at Wellspring Women's Center and a big supporter of community land trusts. Thanks, Kelsey. Let's go to Anne Marie. Finding the mute okay? <laughs> I can come back to you if you'd like. All right, let's go to Bina. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. I'm Bina Leftovitz. I am your trustee for the Sacramento County Board of Education, and I um, have a, a long history of working with a lot of the schools in Oak Park, and we'd love to come back sometime and talk to you about what SCOE does, but I'm happy to be here tonight to learn and listen and to meet you all. So thank you. Thank you, Anne Marie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I am Anne Marie Bassich. I'm the principal at Christian Brothers High School, and we're right there in Oak Park on Martin Luther King Boulevard, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. I um, I started as principal there in uh, June of 2020. Um, actually, came from New York, so um, just want to be a better neighbor. Um, have been intending to come to these meetings for a while. So glad to, to be here and participate and hope to participate more often. We have these every first Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. on Zoom. So um, FYI. <laughs> uh, hey, Michael Blair, your turn. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Michael Blair, and I'm a board member here and just glad to see everybody tonight. So thanks for popping in. Thanks, Michael. And Danielle Foster. Thanks. Um, the council member mentioned me earlier, but I work for the city and I'm the housing policy manager and I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks, Danielle. Ahmed. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Ahmed Nagib, uh, Oak Park resident and I also work at Oak Park at College Track. Um, I'm here in my capacity as one of the co-chairs of the Community Land Trust. So. It's a pleasure to be here with y'all tonight. Thanks, Ahmed. Let's go to Greg Halstead. Good evening, everyone. My name is Greg Halstead, and I am your police captain for the Oak Park area. So it's a pleasure to be here with everybody. Thank you. Let's go to Allison Joe. Good evening. Uh, good to see everyone, um, and great to see the turnout. Uh, my name is Allison Joe. I'm the chief of staff for Councilmember Schneer. Thanks again. Thank you, Rosie. Hi everyone, my name is Rosie. Um, I am a resident of Oak Park. I live on Santa Cruz. Been here since 2017. Happy to be here. Go to Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Kerr. I'm a consultant with the Sacramento Community Land Trust. I've been working with them for about a year and a half. I'm just excited to hear this conversation. Thank you. Mark Adams. Hello, and thank you for having me. Uh, Mark Adams, I own and operate AHI Construction. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work in, in, in the Oak Park area. One of two of my most notable projects are the 40 acre uh, facelift on the market and underground books, as well as I help close out the Cap City 
Broadway project over there while utilizing green tech in American Legion High School students. So I also have a nonprofit called the Urban Empowerment Academy. So looking forward to seeing what this uh, these 10 projects have and how we utilize people in Oak Park to help build up their own community. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Let's go to Luis next. Good evening, one, everyone. My name is Lisa Menes. I am a board member for OPNA uh, and a member of the neighborhood. It's so nice to see everyone. Thank you. Nicole. Hi, uh, I'm Nicole Brodeur. I, um, I live on 8th Avenue in Oak Park between 32nd and 33rd Street. And I have a, um, a native landscaping business. Um, and I believe I live right across the street from one of the lots we're going to be talking about. So glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. And shout out for Nicole uh, helping to steward the 34th Street off ramp near Highway 50. OPNA is actually the, the Caltrans Adopt a Highway caretaker for that. And Nicole has been essential to beautifying that space. So thanks, Nicole. Um, let's go to Dylan Miner. I'm Dylan Miner, former resident of the Oak Park neighborhood and also a representative currently of the Sacramento Community Land Trust. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Go to Cassandra. Good evening. I'm Cassandra Jennings with St. Hope. Gary. You're unmuted, Gary. Oh, you're calling on me. Yes. Um, yes, I'm the only Gary on it. I'm the co-founder of a nonprofit organization called Clean Start. Here to see uh, how we could bring the uh, clean tech and sustainable community to help out on any of the uh, projects you've got on, on these lots. So thanks for the invitation to join tonight, Adrian. Yeah, for sure. Dimitri. So Paul, uh, Dimitri with Cap City. Erica Bjork. Hi, Adrian. Good to see you and some other friendly faces. Erica Bjork, uh, almost nearly 20 year resident of Oak Park. Um, just very excited um, about what the possibilities for some of these lots. Wanted to listen in. Leah. Hey, all. I'm Leah Miller with Habitat for Humanity, and I'm joined by a few of my colleagues. Uh, Patricia, she was going to share a little bit about Rock the Block coming up, but I'll kick it over to her. Great, am I? Okay, I'm already unmuted, perfect. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm uh, the Homeowner Service Coordinator um, from uh, Habitat for Humanity and um, just wanted to um, thank you for all for being here. I'm excited to hear about the updates. Um, and also we wanted to share that we have um, an upcoming event, Rock the Block. Um, we've had it for a couple of years in Oak Park and we're, we're back for another year. And so um, it's no cost repairs and low cost repairs for landscaping, fencing, just beautifying um, our wonderful Oak Park neighborhood. And um, our applications are opening on the 15th of this month. And so we'd love for you guys to get the word out. Um, and I'll be happy to um, also put the link in the chat um, so that you guys can get some more information about that. Thanks so much, Patricia and Leah. Um, I see an M. Gordon. You want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Yes, um, I'm Michael Gordon. I'm the uh, uh, Director of Construction for Habitat for Humanity. Thank you. Let's go to Liz. Hi everyone, my name's Liz. I'm a longtime resident of Oak Park. Uh, my grandfather was raised in Oak Park and graduated from Sacramento High School in 1929. Thank you. Let's go to MK. Sorry everyone, technologically uh, behind the times. Um, my name is MK Menard. I moved to Oak Park, I should say back to Oak Park, um, over on Santa Cruz Way uh, near 8th Avenue um, last year. And so I'm just kind of pulling my head out and um, looking around like a turtle. And um, I've got an interest in community gardens and community development. Thank you. Let's go to Robert Snyder. 
Hello, I'm a 30 year resident of Oak Park and um, live next to one of the vacant lots and very excited to see some positive action taking place on there. Hopefully get a nice family living in these homes. Thank you. Let's go to Aziza, our wonderful treasurer. Hello, everybody. I'm Aziza. I'm the Oak Park uh, Neighborhood Association treasurer, and I'm also a longtime resident in Oak Park. And um, I'm really passionate about our community gardens. I'm really passionate about our land trusts and our, our what's going on with um, home ownership and wanting to increase diversity in home ownership. Hello. And uh, so, okay. Thanks, Aziza. Uh, let's go to Nancy. <laughs> well, hi there. I'm a new uh, Oak Park resident. Well, two years now, and I live next door to one of the lots, so I'm really interested in what's going to happen there. Thank you. Let's go to Catherine Green. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Catherine. I've been a seven year resident and I am sitting on behalf of City Church of Sacramento. We are on Fourth Avenue. Thank you. My neighbors. <laughs> uh, let's go to Jeffrey Shiraishi. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Shirashi. I'm the executive lieutenant from the Sacramento Police Department for this area. And I will post my contact information in the chat. Sounds like you guys have a lot of exciting things to get to today. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate the, the promptness, you guys. We have, we have a lot of interest to do, but it's important that we get to know each other. Um, so let's go to, uh, is it Monifa? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Monifa. I've been um, a resident of Oak Park for the last 20 years. I own a home on uh, 7th Avenue near Martin Luther King. And um, I used to go to the meetings maybe two years ago and some things happened, but I'm back again. So it's kind of cool that I can attend the meetings on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Bobby Lister. Hello everyone, Bobby Lister representing St. Hope. Thank you, Eric Marquez. Hello everyone. Uh... My name is Eric Marquez. I'm an attorney. I just bought a house in Oak Park on 12th Avenue. Thank you. Let's go to Seaver. We can come back to you, Seaver. Let's go to Mac. Hey, y'all. Uh, Mac, they, them, uh, community organizer here in Sacramento. I've been living in Oak Park, I don't know, probably for like the last, has hopping around it for the last 10, 15 years. Um, decided to be a part of this conversation today. Um, yeah, oh, I'm also with the Sacramento Tenants Union and Decarcerate Sacramento. Thank you. Let's go to Asani. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Asani Shakur. Uh, I'm a developer and a community organizer. Um, and I uh, and most of my work is in Oak Park. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, uh, hearing a discussion on everything. Awesome. Let's go to Samuel. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> Samuel Raskin. Hi, I'm Sam Raskin. I'm uh, Resident of Oak Park, too. I've uh, been living here about five or six years. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And Ardell. Yes, thank you. I'm Ardell Harrison. I'm Outreach Construction. I'm also a property owner in Oak Park. I own the old Crocker Bank building at 2863 35th Street. I'm also the first vice president of the NAACP. So I'm glad to be here. Also, we've been there since 1986. Right on, thank you. And last but not least, Cynthia. Hi all, Cynthia Castillo. I am a board member of the Sacramento Community Land Trust and really excited to hear this conversation. Thank you. 
Awesome. Thanks, everybody. I think with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Councilmember Schneer to just give us a little bit more background on, on these specific lots. I can share my screen in case, uh, Jay, you want to talk about where they are, um, but, but take it away. Great. Thank you very much, Adrian. And thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. I, this is uh, the most folks I've seen at one of your meetings in a while, and that's really exciting. Maybe we'll do this every month. Um, what I also uh, will do is kind of the top lines of this. I really want to leave as much space for discussion um, as possible. So I want to thank OPNA for putting this on. The timing here is perfect uh, because we as an office, your District 5 office, will be giving uh, recommendations for the RFP, not of who should get it, but what should be in the RFP to SHRA early next week. So we will take what we hear tonight and put it in a format and, and we'll share it with everyone, um, but we'll send it over to SHRA as they are writing the RFP. They currently own the, the land. So um, briefly, you know, about four years ago, a little over four years ago, SHRA put out an RFP for these 10 lots plus four lots in Del Paso with the idea that a developer would develop the four lots in Del Paso, um, use the funds from that to develop the lots in Oak Park. I believe the developer made it through three lots uh, before uh, inter intervening factors came in and stopped the development process. Um, so that's been quite a while. And about six months ago, the developer let SHRA know that he was not gonna pursue the lots in Oak Park. Uh, I found out in early November that SHRA was uh, going to develop the lots themselves. They sent us a note saying that they would develop the first three lots and use the funds from selling those lots to develop further lots uh, out of the 10 in Oak Park. I asked that we put a, a stop to that at this point um, because I wanted to have a council discussion about what the best way to do this would be and how to develop these lots um, in, in a certain way and be creative. You know, I, I've thought and I've said this publicly, we cannot solve our housing crisis um, by spending five or $600,000 per door to build units uh, of affordable housing. We need to be smarter, we need to be more creative. And that's my hope for this RFP. Uh, my goals in this were around quality, around affordability, around speed, how quickly can we get these done, uh, and about creativity. I don't think we need one developer for all 10 lots. We can have multiple developers. And again, I don't write the RFP that's coming out of SHRA, but these are recommendations that we're gonna give to them along with what we hear. And we've asked our own staff to come up with things as well. I, I do wanna say that there are 10 lots um, but probably room for 13 structures. Three of the lots are, are large enough to either do ADUs or we could do tiny homes. Again, I don't think there's a limit to what we should be thinking about in doing this. SHRA also has $1.5 million that they put aside for the project. And my hope is that those funds can be used to subsidize the development community on these lots as well. So uh, we do not have a timeline. Oh, and, and finally, I wanna make sure that Oak Park residents have priority for when these lots are built um, and who they're sold to. Um, we have heard from in various ways uh, and at council from local developers. I think that would be great. Uh, we have heard from the community land trust. I think if they can figure out how to partner with a developer, that would be great as well. And we've heard from Habitat for Humanity um, who can do this um, in, in a way that some others can't because of some advantages that they have. Um, but again, that's not my choice at this time. Uh, what we wanna do is hopefully get an RFP that allows for creativity, that really stimulates creativity um, and does the best things for the neighborhood. Again, uh, it doesn't have to be one developer doing all 10 lots. Maybe it's two developers, maybe it's three developers. I don't think we can do 10 because uh, just the administrative work of doing 10 different types of contracts would be difficult. Um, but I, I certainly want to push that as far as we possibly can. Um, I, we don't have a timeline yet. 
Uh, we will, as I said, we will get our information and our recommendations to SHRA early next week. Um, they have about a four to five month time period before a decision would come down that includes putting together the RFP, putting it out, giving people enough time to uh, answer the RFP with a proposal and then making a decision, probably four to six months. Uh, we're gonna push that as well as, as quickly as we can because we want these things to get built. Uh, we need the housing. So Adrian, thank you. I will stop there and I'm happy to answer any questions. And as I said, Allison uh, and Danielle are here. Uh, anything I can't answer from the city's point of view, uh, they can certainly help me with. Um, hello, I have a question. Uh, my name's Liz. And are these houses going to be designated as affordable housing or? Um, they will have to be affordable housing. Affordable. Yes. Okay. Be, and, and there are there are regulations. Um, I, I don't want to get into the weeds too much, but there are regulations about selling them because they were purchased with federal money. And so they have to be used for affordable housing. Thank you, Liz. Good question. Okay. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sharing my screen just so that we can kind of see where they are. I did post in the chat um, a link to this city staff report that goes over, again, the locations and sort of the process um, that the city took action on, 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 I believe, the 25th of January. So just a, less than two weeks ago. Right. And there are some lots that may be combined. There are some lots that are larger than others. Um, again, my hope is that people put in proposals for up to 10 um, but that we can do as well for the community and get as much bang for the buck as possible out of this. Yeah. Hi, I'm Cindy Curry. I had a question. Um, I was wondering if they were um, going to be under the Section 32 program, which I thought was a really good program. It was a program that helped me become a homeowner. homeowner. I think I'm going to uh, ask Danielle if she can answer that question. I don't think that's been determined yet. Okay. All right. But they are going to be single family dwellings. They're not going to, or would they be uh, something else? I don't know. Again, I, we, we want to leave as much room for creativity as we can. It could be a single family dwelling with an ADU. It could be on some of the lots where we have room for two structures. It could be two single family dwellings. So I, I, I want to leave it to the creativity of the people putting in the proposals, um, and particularly local developers, Habitat, and the land trust. And Jay, if I could, I could add um, in the lots, the map of the lots, there each, the, each lot has a specific zoning requirement, which basically allows you to say residential, um, it says R-1 right, or R-2A, and that determines how many units you can build on a lot. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's the, um, it means, but it also allows for potential rezoning. So you could actually rezone it to add more units on a lot if a developer wanted to go forward and do that. So, but this is what it is now as it's uh, in the current, um, it's, it, for the current parcels. Thanks for that. Uh, I have so, a uh, so, so one sec, Mark. So, okay. so I think what, what we wanna do is, is to have a conversation about what residents envision as potential uses for the lots and then have folks like again we have habitat on the call we have the land trust we have some local developers and others and maybe have them re react and respond to some of the ideas that are shared here and see how it might fit in within sort of the their scope of work or their specialty so to speak so um if i, I think the easiest way to do this is if folks would raise their hands uh using the the zoom tool it should be if you're on mobile uh, it should be, uh, you should tap your screen once and see a, either a participant support button or a reactions button and you can find a raise hand button there. Or if you're on a desktop, you can go to reactions, if you have the latest version of Zoom and click raise hand like I just did. Uh, and you can also click that same button to lower hand. So if you have something to say, please raise your hand uh, and it'll just make it a little bit easier to get through folks comments and questions. Um, so I do see someone has their hand raised. That's Cassandra Jennings. Um, so Cassandra, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Adrian, and um, uh, thank you, uh, Councilmember Jake Chenier. Um, I just wanted to say what I think. Uh, I like the creativity and um, flexibility that you're suggesting, and I would hope that the RFP would be open to that. 
um, because I think there are many ways to get at it. Um, I just wanted to emphasize for me, I think what's important is obviously you're going to have affordability, but I think that it should be real clear about the benefits of home ownership because the deeper the subsidy, the less I believe that the, um, the resident the ultimate homeowner will have, be able to take advantage of home ownership. So I would hope that there will be some weight on how they will be able to take advantage of home ownership, meaning will they be able to borrow against it? How much equity can they really earn? And, and all those kinds of things. So I, I would hope that there would be something around that. In addition, I would ask that um, you certainly um, sit, give give more weight to those who and in, in, in that would include local uh, construction and or developers but that it is important that we really lift up Oak Park and um, and those that invested a lot of time and energy in it that they can uh, be able to take advantage of it and then I think the the last thing I'll say when you mentioned that I believe that priority should be given to not only Oak Park residents but those who have connections with Oak Park because as we don't want to mention the word the G word gentrification that some people, if they say I live there and now I'm not there, whether they would also be able to be considered as a preference to come back in their community and be a homeowner. Thanks. So thank you. I hope that those will be taken in consideration for the RFP. Appreciate it. And yeah, keep those keep that feedback coming as, as they relate to the RFP. Um, Mark, you're up next. Uh, thank you, thank you, and uh, I kind of just want to uh, recognize uh, Cassandra and uh, her sentiments, as well as uh, Councilmember Shanir and Adrian. Uh, my thoughts on this, and I appreciate the creative thought of process in this RFP. Uh, one thought that I've always had as someone who's constantly working Oak Park is trying to include people who live in Oak Park in the development of these properties. Um, I started a, a nonprofit called the Urban Empowerment Academy, and the whole main point of it was to teach people how to build these houses while, while continuing to learn on the job training. And we know in Sacramento, we're faced with a workforce development program just by reading the report. Uh, the developer passed on it because one of his requirements is he just didn't have the labor force. And I think we're, we're presented with a prime opportunity where we could take these type of developments and if we partner up or you know come up with a type of program that says, look, we're gonna take people from Oak Park teach them, and I'm a general contractor and I have no problem trying to teach people how to build these problem, build these projects, and then teaching them on the job training and then getting them out there ready for what's about to come down the pipeline. We know our Aggie Square is coming and they're constantly looking for laborers. We have an opportunity and we have a contractor and contractors on this call who are willing to step up and try and develop these properties with people who live in Oak Park. Uh, so I just wanna put that out there as we look at being creative in this RFP, how Sacramento, faced with all the dilemmas we have with our youth, minority youth in this area, um, not having access to proper job training, and we can get them out there. So I'll say this again, I've worked with Green Tech, I've worked with American Legion High School, people from St. Hope, Aca Hope Academy, trying to get these kids in this construction trade. So I wanna make sure that we put that out there uh, as something we can consider. And then I, my last question is, because these are federal funds, will the development be required to provide prevailing wage um, to people working on these projects? And if so, and if that's the case, remember a prevailing wage provides a livable wage. So why not try and get people in these jobs who can actually afford to purchase the home in Oak Park with a job that gives them a, a livable wage? Thanks, Mark. It's nice to see you. Danielle, do you wanna? Uh, Adrian, you want us to try to answer questions as they go, or how do you want? I to think do it? the prevailing the prevailing wage thing. Yeah, I, I know that's something you guys addressed at council, but could we yeah. also just speak on it here? Danielle, sure. So there would be prevailing wage requirements just based on the um, provision of the lots, and yes, they do have a state prevailing wage requirement. Um, the there are some exemptions under the law. And so we know that varying groups um, have different exemptions depending on if they use um, sweat equity and other rules. 
So that I would note, but over overall, just by the means of how the lots were acquired by SHRA, there is an attachment of a prevailing wage. Thanks for and, and I, if I can say, I mean, I would hope that Mark, whether it's you or others, that people put in proposals that include internships, that include local uh, folks. I, I think that's what what we want to do with this. This could be a community project that could really have a lot of benefits. I, I have no desire to see this go to some developer who doesn't live in Oak Park, who doesn't have a connection to Oak Park. Um, so th that that's my hope. And that's why I really wanna encourage people to be creative. And we're really gonna push SHRA and, and to, to be creative in the RFP. And I would say, if anyone wants to send um, their comments directly to SHRA, to the executive director, Lachelle Dozier, please do. I think that will make a difference. The community should be heard on this. Thank you. Is that that um, covered? Okay, awesome. Uh, let's go to Liz next. Hi. Um, my question pertains to the two of the biggest slots on the list of the 10. And is, um, could, is it a possible that um, for these big lots that perhaps, um, and when I'm saying the big ones, I'm talking about the ones that are over by uh, Second Avenue, those two big ones over there, and um, the one that is across from that on the, the east side of Second Avenue. Is it, do you, do you anticipate uh, that some of these, a couple of these lots could be used for apartments? Uh, or condominiums? In other words, is, are you trying to, um, is one of the goals to get as much housing per lot as you can? I, I don't know that we have gotten that far in our thinking. I would, mm -hmm. again, invite people to put in proposals that they think would work. Mm -hmm. um, we have identified a few lots, which you were talking about that can, handle more than one structure. Um, so uh, again, I would I would go to Danielle and see if she has thoughts on that. We may be a little premature. I would agree. I think it's still early and we want to look at community context of each for each of the lots and the zoning that's in place. Um, so I mean we're we're trying to balance creativity and getting it you know, as much housing as we can with also looking at the context of where we're developing it. So I don't, I don't think those decisions have been made. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Liz. Let's go to Kelsey next. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm born and raised in Oak Park. My, my parents bought a house here and uh, bought this house in 90 three for forty thousand dollars <laughs> and um i left the neighborhood in 2011 for school and i assumed that i would get a degree and come back and be a homeowner in oak park i like dreamt of buying a small home and um you know doing repairs on it basically doing what my parents did and by the time i returned you know six or seven years later it's just impossible like there's no way i could be a homeowner in oak park with a master's degree and a full-time job. Um, and it's a tragedy. I just I just wanna speak to kind of the heartbreak of that. Um, and I know a lot of people on this call are really aware of that, but I it really needs to be said that um, I hope that SHRA will be very explicit in their requirement that these lots go to people who are from the community. Um, not me, I'm not talking about myself personally, but just like that is so important. And, and whether it's through a community land trust model or Habitat for Humanity, like really prioritizing um, home ownership opportunities for people, not who, you know, just live in Oak Park, um, I love, everyone that lives in Oak Park, but that being from Oak Park really means something given how quickly the neighborhood has changed. Um, so people who, yeah, yeah, that's it. And, and I also just want to say that um, in my social work education, I've studied community land trusts. I think that they're a really awesome model for affordable homeownership. And, and you know, Cassandra raised a lot of important points about um, the ability to accrue equity and, and 
those kinds of things. And lots of community land trusts in other communities do that, uh, like allow the people from the community land trust are here and they'll speak to this better than me. But I just think it's a really wonderful model. I think it's an opportunity for people to be homeowners in Oak Park that could not otherwise do it. And um, yeah, I'm curious to see how, um, you know, assuming that housing is built on these lots, how people will be selected for the opportunity. I hope that it, that will be done with intention and with community input um, and with a lot of care. Um, I know that people are really stressed about the housing crisis, of course. I hope that this process will not be rushed. It's only 10 lots. We're not going to solve the housing crisis with 10 lots, but we do have an opportunity to really do something different and do something special and, and something um, that could be a model and inspiring in a really difficult time. And, and so personally, I feel okay about moving more slowly if it means that we put people in these housing you know, whatever this housing ends up looking like, we put people here with intention, people who really, I mean, everyone deserves housing, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Let's go to Ahmed next. Cool, Kelsey, thank you for the setup. I, I appreciate it. Uh, so Kelsey, you said your, your, your parents bought their house in 93, right? So by my math, right? Sorry, that's about 30 years. Um, and that's what we talk about affordability in our community a lot of times we talk about affordability in the scope of like 40 years and restrictions uh we're at the community land trust we're interested in perpetual affordability so after kelsey's parents decide to sell their home right and and that goes on where where how do we ensure that that home stays affordable for oak park residents right that kelsey might be able to buy her parents home right um and i think when we talk about the community land trust, one thing I want to point out, I've heard a lot of folks uh, mention, you know, community voice and community agency and ownership. Um, and the CLT's model is very much different than a traditional nonprofit. We are a shared governance model. Um, we take direction from our members. We take direction eventually from our tenants, from the folks who live on the land or in, in buildings that we may own and rent at affordable rates, right? Um, and that's really, really important because when we talk about the future decision making from like, we're not talking about just five years, but 10, 15, 20, 30 years about what happens with these homes, um, how the processes are of how we are keeping them affordable and how we're subsidizing and continue to grow our affordable community. Uh, that's a big part of that. It's a big part of what we believe in. As a board, we take direction from our members. And so that's something that I really want to emphasize of how a community land trust is able to provide agency to our community. Uh, second of all, I think for from when we talk about the RFP process, I would really, really, really love us to talk about what is uh, affordable and what are the definitions that we are using for affordable, right? Because I think there are calculations in which a $400,000 home might be coded as affordable based on certain income and subsidies, uh, but ultimately that does not keep it affordable in the long term when we're selling such a market rate. How can we get this, the folks who are at the 30% income threshold level to be moving into homes that are you know, valuable homes, but at a subsidized enough rate where they can afford it and continue to build equity in a way. Um, and the way the community land trust does that is by through the land ownership portion, which is where we do, you know, a land lease with the home um, and are able to subsidize that purchase at the rate of the, the cost of the land, right, which at this point is pretty heavy part of the purchase price. Um, in the billing price. And so uh, really interesting to see this RFP and the different pieces of it, but to have it really include echoing the community ownership. Um, how are there, how is the developer or the developers, like how are they promising to keep those folks in their home, not just beyond the first or second or third sale, uh, but in perpetuity, right? Because we don't want to see ourselves back in 10, 15 years, uh, having this same conversation again and again. So, and I'll, uh, I'll see the floor. Thanks, Ahmed. I think there's also um, something. Could I add one thing to that, Adrian? Because I think it's really important. Um, you know, when we when we had the hearing and, and in discussions with SHRA uh, about them actually doing it, I asked how much it would cost for them to build each home. And their answer was $650,000. Um, I asked what they would sell it for, and they said 457000 because that's what they would be allowed at 110% of AMI. We have to do better than that. We, we cannot put homes out on the market 
for close to $500,000 and expect people in the neighborhood to be able to buy them. We need to do better. And that's, that's where I'm really trying to go here and create some models. Thank you. And I think there's, there's also something to be said for, you know, this RFP process. We have folks on this call who are not familiar with an RFP and, and, you know, when I think about the process, it's not particularly accessible. And so wondering if, you know, the city has taken some action just to simplify the process to, to make it accessible, to make it less confusing and more approachable. Um, has, have folks who kind of worked with the city's RFP process seen progress on that? And is there anything we can do with this one to just make it, make it better? <laughs> Let, let me let me say one thing and then I want to turn it over to Danielle on this as well. Um, th this is going to be somewhat complicated because of federal regulations because of how the land was bought. So there are some things that are just going to have to be in there, but I'm hoping that we can make it accessible as possible. Danielle, do you want to add to that? I think it's important feedback and it's something that the city's been doing with all of our processes as much as possible as we've been doing grant processes. Um, especially with, you know, COVID response and recovery. Um, I just want to differentiate that this one's coming through SHRA. So it's, um, it's more of their process, but I think it's important for us to provide that comment and feedback. Um, and as the council member pointed out, there, there are some parameters based on the, the source of funds for both purchase of the land and, and the funds that they have for the project. But good, good comments and things that we'll, we'll send over. Thank you. Uh, Cindy, then Joel. And Cindy, you're muted. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was curious as to, uh, you know, especially since the lots that are next door to me, it, it uh, it's so big. I thought, well, what about having um, being able to serve the senior community, seniors in, and we don't really have a lot of places for seniors in Oak Park. And, um, you know, that would serve a, a, a large group of people. And if you built a, a, a senior complex on that large area, those two lots, that would really help a lot of people, you know, 55 and older, you know, and I know it's nice to uh, you know be able to to provide for 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 families who are who are young and growing, but I think seniors also need to be uh, considered as well. And um, that large lot there, if you built a, a a senior complex there, I think that would serve uh, a, a a lot of people, and I think that would be a good thing. So, so I just wanted to throw yeah, that I just out. want to emphasize this really depends on the proposals that come in and we hope people are creative. I will note that the Arbors is for seniors. Uh, where St. Hope has their headquarters and also the Donner property, which is next to the old Donner school. Um, it will be affordable housing for seniors as well. And I believe I'm thinking 46 units, Danielle, is that right? 45, 46 units and that's all senior housing. That'll go up as well. And that's on the on uh, next to the old Donner School on Stockton Boulevard and Tenth. Oh, okay. Well, that's. And I'm speaking as a senior now. Thank you. Got good to have that perspective. <laughs> uh, let's go to Joelle. <laughs> Hi everyone, and I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who showed up for their neighborhood. It's so good to hear from neighborhood residents, people who work in the neighborhood, and the Community Land Trust wants to work with you, wants to hear from you, um, and we invite all of you to our upcoming community meeting. That's next week. Um, we'll provide the link to register and learn more there. Um, but I, I wanted to kind of follow up on some things that I've heard from all of you talking about seniors, talking about um, long term family planning. Um, so one of the things that people might be wondering about a community land trust is can you inherit it? If you if your parents purchase with a community land trust, they get older, they pass away. Can can you inherit it? The answer is yes. It really. Um, 
there are a lot of benefits to community land trust, uh, especially when it comes to um, your, you can still be eligible for homeowners and senior citizens, real estate tax exemptions. People really still think like, okay, this is like some brand new thing that we all have to learn, but um, under a land trust arrangement, um, you are still the legal owner of the real estate that you purchase, of the building that you live in, you are the legal owner. Um, but what we're really asking you to think about when we're talking about a community land trust is thinking about land instead of a commodity that can be bought and sold, which got us into this whole speculation housing nightmare in the first place. We're asking you to think about land as a community benefit that is owned by everyone in the neighborhood, that all of the members of a community land trust have equal voice and it doesn't have to be some, you know, some person who's not accountable to you making decisions about what's happening in your neighborhood. And so that's what I really wanted to share because um, when I think about, you know, my mom and you know, I, I grew up in that house and I, I would love to know that no matter what, you know, that house could come to me in, in the eventual passing. And so I just want y'all to know that that's something that you can rest assured that the community land trust also has those values of community and we're not, we're not trying to make decisions without you. So thank you. Thanks, Joelle. And, and I think uh, uh, Councilmember Valenzuela characterized CLTs during the council meeting as a, just an additional layer. You know, it's not its own thing. It's an additional layer that can be partnered and built onto other, you know, other projects uh, uh, of all sorts. So I thought that was a, a good, important, important characterization. Um, let's go to Leah, then Erica. Hey guys, um, I just want to share, you know, Habitat for Humanity, some of you are familiar with us. Some of you have maybe even built on some of our job sites, help build homes and repair homes. Um, we've been around in the Sacramento community specifically for 36 years. And in that time, uh, we built over 160 homes, the majority of which are actually in Oak Park. So we're really familiar with building in the Oak Park community and in community in partnership with the Oak Park community. You know, most of the homes we build have 90% uh, volunteer labor. So, you know, we always look forward to communities coming out, rolling up their sleeves and helping to build homes, which is also the same thing that we do with Walk the Block, which you, know, you already heard about from uh, Patricia earlier. You know, and one thing I'll share, I heard a couple of people talk a little bit about prevailing wage and, you know, how expensive it might be for because of the, the funding, the, the way that the, the homes or the, I'm sorry, the properties were purchased, as well as the funding that's available and what that triggers. Um, and, you know, Council Member Schinner gave a great example of the cost for SHRA to build. And because there is, you know, some funding available from the city involved, it, it would trigger that prevailing wage and habitat because um, some of you may know. Um, partner families that are selected and qualified uh, put in 500 hours of sweat equity to help build their home and other habitat homes, which provides habitat something called the SAFE Act exemption. And what that means is that we're able to build for less. We aren't subject to prevailing wage. So when habitat builds a home, we're able to stretch the dollars further. The homes that we build, like the ones that we currently have under construction cost about $250,000, which is significantly less, just doing the math, <laughs> than five to $600,000 uh, with the number that Council Member Schneer was sharing before. And when those homes are complete and, and made possible in partnership with the community, those qualified partner families who are low income earning between 30 and 80% of area median income, purchase those homes with a mortgage from Habitat that is at zero is a zero interest equivalent mortgage. And it's structured so that it's affordable for the long term for that family, it includes property taxes and insurance and Habitat is the lender in most cases on those and uh, is able to work with the families to ensure that they're able to you know, continue to own their home and we work in partnership with them. And they do own both the land and the home combined. Um, there is a deed restriction in place for 45 years. And when that home should sell, that deed restriction restarts. So it's not, it doesn't just end, but it's affordable, you know, in, in the perpetuity sort of sense as well, because of the deed restriction starts over again. Um, and what happens when you do that is you have to requalify another family within that, that income bracket. And Habitat is there for the long haul as an organization with that long-term success record to qualify that, that next family and help to originate a new mortgage for that family. Um, and that's just a little bit about Habitat. And we're really excited about the opportunity to apply through the RFP process to acquire, uh, to acquire some of these properties and work in partnership with the community to build these and create affordable housing uh, for the community. Because as we all shared so many of you on this, this call that that's really important to all of us. 
Thanks, Leah. Let's go to Erica. Thanks, Adrian. Um, uh, Council member and, and Allison and Danielle, I, I am not fine now, but I'll keep looking. From, from kind of what I'm hearing from everyone, and I certainly understand the value of being a homeowner in Oak Park. So I'm hearing a lot of anything we can do to create a pathway to home ownership for these lots, um, because it does build that generational wealth, it builds that personal equity, all those key things. There was a pilot project outside of Chicago, and it was an interesting partnership between a developer, financer, city, and a variety of other groups. And that what they basically did is at the end of the day, they were able to identify families from the neighborhood and put them in housing where their mortgage was essentially even less than what they were paying in rent. Um, and they found ways and means to cover the down payments to help them. And so it took a couple different pieces, but it was a, a pretty unique thing that in the big picture, developer was happy. They had homeowners, neighborhood was happy. So I'm, I'm gonna keep looking for it, but there is one or two examples of that out there where it just might take one or two additional partners or pieces, but there are some good examples of that, um, as well as building like multiple family sites on one site to, to maximize the space. Thanks, Erica. Those are those are good good ideas and models. Um, so I think we're going to go till about seven oh five, if that works for folks. And then I'd love to hear from from Jay for just sort of a recap from his perspective, if that's okay with you, Jay. Kind of like the things you've heard that you guys plan to take back as part of the RFP development. And I'm actually going to. I know Liz and Cindy. I really love your contributions, but I, I'd like to skip to some folks who haven't had a chance to speak yet. Those being Rose and Seaver first. So. Rose, um, why don't you take it and then Seaver? Then I'll come back to Liz and Cindy. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, so I just wanted to highlight, I know that we're talking about housing. We need more affordable housing. But another thing that we've heard from Oak Park uh, community in the past five years that the Sacramento Community Land Trust has been talking to the community is the need for places for local businesses to set up shop, right? And um, even the need for like a laundromat. We had that conversation with some neighbors. They needed somewhere to go wash their clothes. So um, I think the, the other cool thing about involving the community land trust is we can really find out what neighbors want in more than just a one hour meeting that we're having tonight. Um, and what you wanna see for each of these individual lots, right? Because maybe one lot needs to be multifamily housing and another lot needs to be a small community owned business. Um, and so I think it's thinking about those creative solutions for each individual lot as well. Um, and the last point I'll make is um, just about the RFP process, because I know we were here five years ago, six years ago. And I think it's important to think about and look at that actual process. And I'm hoping that that process can change and be more community minded and actually have um, language in there that will say, hey, you need to work with the community, no matter who you are, if you're a developer, whatever developer you are, needs to put the community needs first. Um, and I think I would encourage everyone in this call, I think we heard Council Member Chenier say to contact SHRA and say, hey, this is what we want to see in the, in the request for proposals um, to do that. Because I think a lot of times community voice is lost. And um, so we just have to keep speaking up. So thanks. Thanks, Rose. Seaver. Yeah, hi, my name's Seaver. I uh, am an Oak Park resident for just about five years now. I'm near Stockton Boulevard and 14th Ave. So uh, yeah, I think this is really exciting. It's so cool to see so many people on here from my area. It's trippy pandemic, right? Anyways, um, yeah, my, uh, my comments regard the like, if there's going to be expected energy performance goals just across the entire project, which you could probably tie in with climate goals. And uh, I would suggest that a critical goal be utility and energy resilience. So protecting, uh, you know, power supply and proper functioning of these buildings under all uh, circumstances. So that can be as simple as just, you know, insulating the heck out of it. Um, it could also maybe tie into different building materials such as adobe, brick, uh, things that homeowners might be able to maintain better versus more modern assemblies, which might include all these weatherproofing plastic sheets that, uh, you know, might not be around for whatever reason, uh, supply chains or whatnot. So yeah, I'm really excited to see uh, this project move forward and uh, 
yeah, uh, hopefully some attention can be paid to these topics. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I know we had our Ar Dell um, uh, shared that he's been in the neighborhood for a long time. I don't know if you had any comments you wanted to share uh, as as a, a, a local developer person who's been in the neighborhood for decades. <laughs> no pressure. <clears throat> And uh, just to just to kind of uh, jump in, Ardell, I know he had a split meeting. He actually has an NAACP leadership meeting right now, so I think he's kind of back and forth. So he might be popping back in. Understood. Okay. Uh, is there anyone who hasn't had a chance to speak yet who wants to uh, make any points, ask any questions um, right now? Okay, I, I have one question and it's and it's related to the RFP process. So let's say there's like five applicants and each one has like, you know, makes the case that they could work with all 10 of these vacant lots, right? Uh, so you have a pool of applicants. Would then the reviewing committee or whoever does that, would they be able to sort of select and say like, oh, we'll award, we'll make an award of like two vacant lots to this entity or and three to this and three to this is that kind of how, how how does the how does that process work um so um it's a good question for shra okay um i we we have worked on rfps with them they have a lot of um standards that they have to adhere to so i want to put it that way um I don't think we would, and I'm, this is just me talking now, uh, I don't think we would want to have more than three developers at the very most, just because the complications and the economies of scale of having multiple contracts and multiple accountability. I would love to see multiple developers come in because if we had three developers, for example, uh, we might be able to get all 10 built within three, three years. Whereas if one person had 10, it might take six or nine years, which is what uh, SHRA was was um, putting forward that the council, and, and just so you know, at the council, and I think Adrian, you were there or watching, uh, there were two choices presented by staff. One was SHRA builds, and the other was uh, do an RFP in the council, not unanimously, but I think with one dissenting vote or two dissenting votes uh, chose to go through an RFP. So Adrian, I think that's a really good question and people will have to know that before uh, the RFP goes out. And so within the scoring, we would know how that would work. I don't have an answer for you now, but we will definitely have an answer be at the right time. And and Jay, the other thing I would note, um, again, this is, we're kind of like you on in some ways, providing some suggestions and comments on how um, someone else's process happens, right? Um, so we're going to take these all into account. I, I do know and remember that they did a pre-proposal meeting um, so that those who were interested in pursuing um, and, uh, and, and, and basically applying um, could ask questions. Um, and so that's, I mean, there's, there's different formats and we can, um, and they would definitely do that over Zoom. I don't know how much it would be. I don't, I'm not sure the formats and there's definitely some accessibility questions to make sure you, you can see that kind of those kind of questions and and the responses. So that's back to those those processes are are always um, always um, room for improvement in every way. So um, but appreciate these are really great um, comments and I've been taking notes. I'm recording the chat. I'm going to listen to the recording. Um, Danielle and, and Jay and I are going to probably come back and have some more ideas. Um, so. That's my piece. And, and so what I would ask is if people have thoughts that you haven't heard tonight, please let us know, let's say close a business Monday by then. Um, and Allison, if you wanna put our email in the chat, that would be great. Um, we will put a letter together that we will send to SHRA Tuesday or Wednesday that will include everything we hear because we want them to, they couldn't be here tonight, but we definitely want them to hear all of your thoughts on this. Um, and we will make that letter public. We will share it back with you, Adrian, to share back 
with everyone on this. Uh, I want to be completely transparent on this. Again, um, we heard lots of great things, you know, mostly about community involvement. Um, and our goals here are affordability, speed, creativity, quality, uh, and assurance that the 1.5 million that SHRA was going to use for this will be used for this as subsidy that people can apply for. Um, and uh, I think a very major thing is that uh, quality applicants who are from Oak Park would get priority. Okay. And I really appreciate everybody coming out. I think this is an important issue. Uh, I wish we were talking about 200 units. Um, we're only talking about 10 to 13. Um, but I think if we do this right, we set a model. And again, we have to do business differently. We cannot continue to spend half a million dollars every time we build a unit of affordable housing. We just will run out of money before we build very much. So I think we can use this as an example of being smart, being community oriented, developing new partnerships that are sustainable for the long run. So I wanna thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's really important. I had a quick question, sorry, before we, before I know Jay, that was a good wrap up. Um, but I had a question of everyone um, because I, I heard some different things um, and I wanted to just get a sense of if there was any um, preference towards getting the vacant lots um, built quickly um, or taking time to get the process right, which might mean a longer time period. I mean, it's it to change public processes take a really long time. And I, I mean, we've been here for, I've, Jay's been on, on council for, for 11 years now, right? Um, and there are things he's still trying to get done. So I just wanna get a temperature check from you all, um, you know, how how quickly do you want to see the lots developed in this process moving forward? And if I if I could add something there really quickly, and thank you, Allison. Uh, you know, famous basketball coach John Wooden once said, "Be quick, but don't hurry." I think that's where we are. Uh, we want to do it right, um, but at at a deliberate speed. I don't want this to go on for a year or two years. That could easily happen. Uh, it took four years to get to where we are today. So let's do it quicker than that for sure. Maybe folks could do like a show of hands uh, for quickness, I guess, and then a show of hands for a more deliberate process. How about, how about, how about a different symbol? A raise hand, a heart, or a thumbs up, or something like that? Okay. Could we maybe do that. Will that work? It yeah, requires a little symbol, zoom. <laughs> what symbol do you want to use for which? <laughs> uh, let's, do, let's do heart for. Uh, taking the time but doing it right, <clears throat> and then a hand up, or well, let's do a different symbol. Uh, maybe a, a thumbs up for let's just get it done. We could launch a quick poll. <laughs> if you have the poll set up, you could totally do that. That's yeah. on Michael. <laughs> I thought this is working. It looks pretty well, even, honestly. <laughs> okay, that's still good. No, I mean, it's still good because I'm, I'm hearing sorry, a lot of I can't participate. I don't know how to put a heart thing. So sorry, Cindy. It's yeah, in the same too. place as your raised hand. I regret to say I can't remember which symbol is which. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. Uh, yeah, this too. Earlier, earlier Mark was saying how um, he wanted to make sure that folks in the community actually participated and got the skills. I know sometimes that can make the process a little slower with the developer, but I'm okay with that. I, I want to get it done, want to get it done quick, but if there's a chance to have folks come in, actually get the training that they need, and it takes a few more months, I'm okay with that. And I, and I think that, that that's going to be determined by the, the RFP process, Mike. I think um, at the front end is where we really have to look at this, right? Um, to make sure that we ensure equity and inclusivity um, throughout the process. And I think that's where we've kind of faltered, I believe, is just in that that front process, as Adrian said, that, that RFP process is so convoluted. Anybody who's written a grant or, or looked at some things like that, it can be very daunting. So we really need to look at that and see how we can make that more, um, you know, kind of uh, understandable for, you know, uh, developers and the community as well. Yeah. 
It seems like it makes sense to really like spend time addressing the RFP process with SHRA, particularly if like Jay is saying, you wanna look at using this approach more moving forward um, because it's so expensive to build affordable housing. If this could be a way of developing more affordable housing, not on 10 lots, but in you know all kinds of lots in other areas too, like, the RFP process is such a big part of that, like Rose was saying, and we're not going to get anything different if the process itself doesn't change. Um, yeah. And I think it takes time to do things with intention, and we're not going to solve the affordable housing or the homeless crisis or gentrification in Oak Park with 10 lots, but we might actually like develop a model of something that's really special and different and creative um, and and the lots have been vacant my entire life. Like that, if it takes a little more time to do something different, that seems valuable. Thanks, Kelsey. So we we really do. I know this is a really rich conversation. Um, we really do have to have our elections. It's in our bylaws as as an Oak, the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. So um, appreciate appreciate this this really good conversation. We will be uh, as, as OPNA. Um, um, publishing this, making it public, getting it on YouTube, uh, and, and um, sharing what we've learned with all of you who've been able to share your contact information. So if you have not, uh, or if, if uh, you found us on Nextdoor or on Facebook uh, and don't engage with us regularly, please share your info um, in the chat so we can make sure to follow up. And Adrian, I would say if you can, I think Jay said early next week, I think if you can do it by the end of next week, that would be helpful. I think if it's if if there's anything that's dramatically different than what you guys have said today, comments in a comment letter, let us know. But I think we've captured a lot of the the things that you guys have concerned about concerns about, and I really appreciate it. It's great. And hey, Adrian, before we move on, Ardell looks like he's back online. I want to give him an opportunity to just uh, say whatever he wanted to to add to the conversation. Ardell. Thank you, Mike. I'm, as you know, I'm on country. I'm in the middle of nowhere. So my connections are really bad. I think it's um, important that we do take our time because as a developer and a contractor with the prices changing so rapidly and going up, it's real hard to really get a good gauge on the cost, you know? So the cost today might not, not be the one for tomorrow. So I think, um, you know, you can't have a situation where we are um, doing the affordable housing without having a subsidy um, to make it work because we can't control the, the cost right now. And I'm, I'm really interested. I'm vested in Oak Park. I've been here since 86 and um, I've done a lot of uh, houses, remodeling and new construction. So I'm real excited about this program and being able to be part of it. So um, let's, let's do it right. Let's take our time and do it right and we can use it for a model for other areas. If we set the, the stage here and iron out all the bugs, I think we'll do very well. Thank you. Thanks, Ardell. And yeah, there's a lot of, just a lot of interested partners on this call as well as neighbors. So please, you know, if you heard something that you think could, you know, you have a creative idea around that could make for a, you know, a compelling proposal, you know, follow up with that person, you know, could be SAC CLT meets Ardell meets you know your organization or Habitat or uh, Mark's organization. So um, there's a lot of potential among the folks on this call, and and you know in so in addition to providing feedback on the RFP process, let's let's get creative and see you know let's hit some folks up, let's come up with some ideas and have some convers smart conversations. All right. Well, thank you all. Uh, we're now so hoping that uh, residents of Oak Park can stay on because you all get to, to vote in our annual uh, board elections. We have some uh, really exciting uh, new and returning uh, candidates with us. Um, so again, this happens every February, the Oak Park Neighborhood Association um, hosts, hosts these elections. And um, every two years, new, new members can, can uh, well, <laughs> have to run for reelection to stay on the board. Uh, and then also new folks in the neighborhood who are interested in serving as a volunteer board member are able to come on uh, through a community vote. So again, uh, it's all, all resident led um, decision-making uh, uh, through the, the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is actually um, post in the chat 
uh, a form. And so this is a Google form. Hopefully folks can uh, access it. But what we're going to do is go around sort of the room among the folks who are um, running for a board position. We're going to get here a, a short spiel from each of them. <laughs> and then um, folks can fill out that form uh, in accordance with who they would like to see. Thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, see serve on the board. So I think we're actually going to start um, with Mr. Michael Benjamin, uh, who's been serving for nearly two years on, on the, the OPNA board, but he's he's been here a lot longer than that. Um, Michael, would you just like to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you what you uh, what your passions are and your vision is for Oak Park? Mm -hmm. Sure. So my name is Michael Benjamin II. Um, affectionately known in the neighborhood as Mike B. I'm born and raised in Oak Park. So I am a, um, I'm a 95820 baby. Um, uh, went to Tahoe Elementary School, Cal Middle School, and then graduated from Sacramento High School. So, and um, second generation, my father graduated from there as well. Um, the service for my communities is in my bloodline. My auntie and my grandmother were on a, a, an initial group called, uh, the OPAC, O Park Action Committee. And so I would sit in those meetings as kids um, and just take in, you know, and just, you know, take in what they were talking about, which is how we better our community. My father's owned two uh, all black owned and operated uh, theaters in O Park. And so this is just, uh, it's what I know, you know, it's, 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 it's my a landscape. I still walk these streets because, you know, it's, it, it's really kind of all I know. And so I'm dedicated to making sure that you know, we keep Oak Park equitable, inclusive, and, um, you know, just a good place for people to come live, raise kids and, 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 and uh, whatnot. So um, two years uh, initially got on. I'm proud to say, you know, been a part of uh, being able to, you know, come up with like, you know, help develop the Oak Park Cares Initiative, which now we're providing, you um, you know, rental, uh, not real bill assistance to uh, community members. And so, you know, just being able to see in the two years, you know, how the, the neighborhood association has grown. I just uh, want to continue to play my role and um, be a part of our growth. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. So Luis, Luis is a, another continuing board member, currently our newest. Um, uh, and we love Luis. Go ahead, Luis. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Adrian. And thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Luis Jimenez. I've been a resident in Oak Park um, going on four years now. Uh, before that, I immigrated to the Taco Park area. So I was there for uh, most of my upbringing, but uh, most of my professional service and work has been done at the state level um, in the legislature and the, the governor's administration and, and state agencies and advocacy work here and there. Um, but I'm looking forward to uh, just coming back to the community and supporting the community's voice and goals moving forward and making sure that our priorities are represented as we go more resources for the community, as we have more um, investments coming to the community, as policy continues to um, impact the community and local government does so as well. I just want to make sure that I'm a, a great resource for the community uh, with just my skills and my experience um, to make sure that uh, the community's priorities and voices are being represented um, no matter what those priorities look like. Um, so I just hope that I can continue serving on the board um, and then hopefully help out further with the Oak Park Cares program that was developed um, and then just continue to start new exciting projects that'll um, continue to improve our community and, and help some of our folks out. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Luis. So those are our two returning board members. Um, we also have two new applicants, which we're super excited about, uh, Dave and Rosie. Um, so I'm gonna go to Dave first. Um, Dave, just share wh whatever you'd like about yourself and uh, your, your time in the neighborhood and what you envision for your contributions to OPNA. Uh, thank you. Thank you everyone for um, having me. Um, my name is David Brown and um, I've lived in uh, Oak Park uh, since 2011. My wife uh, bought the house before I knew her that we live in uh, back in 2004. And um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm 56 years old and I've worked for the county for over 30 years. And I'm just at that stage uh, in my life uh, where I wanna get more involved in the community in which I live and, and try to contribute, uh, get to know my neighbors better. And uh, I 
really want to be involved. And, uh, but I have to admit, I don't have uh, uh, any background with uh, community involvement or activism. Um, and uh, that is something that, uh, you know, it might be outside my wheelhouse, but uh, it is something I'm definitely interested in. Um, like I said, at this stage in my, my life and, and career, I, I want to get involved. And uh, uh, I am an attorney. Um, I recognize the Jeffrey Fletcher who's on this call. He may know me. Um, he definitely knows my wife. Uh, I don't know if he's there or not, but, um, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how I'll fit in. Uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of uh, passionate people with a lot of knowledge um, already on the board, and I'm just hoping to, you know, um, take my cue from some of the people that are already on the board in terms of what I can offer and how I can help out. Thank you. Never too late to learn. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least, let's hear from Rosie. Cool. Thanks, Adrian. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, as I said, uh, my name is Rosie Ramos Gomez. Uh, I have been in the neighborhood for um, like four and, a, four and a half years, 2017 um, is when I moved out here. I am on Santa Cruz. Um, and yeah, I think um, I'm excited to uh to try to help out this organization. Um, just a little bit about my background. Um, I have a planning background and communications background. Those are my um, fields of focus and study. And I actually work for the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, which is a planning agency um, for the region. So we work with the jurisdictions like the city and the county um, across the six uh, counties here in the region. And so I have that planning background. Um, but my, my real passion is bringing uh, an equitable lens to planning um justice-based planning or, or, or community-based planning um i think it's the most important thing that we can do right like to to focus on community need and bring that up into the process for how decisions get made um and so that's sort of my uh my agenda is trying to change the planning processes and the different roles that i have as a as a SACOG employee but also um trying to find my space in the community um in the community as well and so um Oak Park has been my home for the past four years, and I want to try to find a way to give back to it. Um, I'm very conscious of what me buying a home here was. I'm very conscious of, of the historical importance that this neighborhood has for the Black community. And so I want to make sure that while I am new, I can bring something positive and make it um, a better place for more people to um, to be able to thrive um, and make sure that as we are, you know, obviously there's going to be more people that move in, but how do we make sure that the original people out here are being taken care of? And so that's um, that's something that I really value, and I hope that I can bring that um, perspective to the board. And um, and yeah, and I think um, I, I'm excited to just get to work with more folks and connect more with my neighbors. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all for for opting to run for a two year term. We're really excited about it. So so everyone can if everyone who would like to vote can please. Click on the link that I shared in the chat. Uh, eligible voters include any residents of Oak Park, uh, owners of, uh, or people who have a business license or who own property in Oak Park. So those are sort of the three characteristics of someone who can vote. So resident, business owner, property owner. Um, you can, you know, residents in, do include the unhoused and the unsheltered for the record. Um, so hit that link and just uh, hopefully people can access it and please complete that checking a box for each of the, um, uh, uh, applicants. Liz, do you have a question? Oh, oh, I, I, I see the, it's a docs, Google forms with the, is that the link you're talking Correct. about? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's all I wanted to ask. Okay. Yeah. And, and can I get a volunteer who's not running to help me, um, to like check the note, like, so we have two eyes on the results. M Michael Blair, could you do that? I think Aziza might be on her phone. All right, so make sure you submit your um, your entry. All right, everybody, anybody hey, still? Hey, yeah, go hey, ahead. Sorry, I was on mute, but I said yes, I'll help. And how do I access the uh, results? So I'm gonna make, now, now that you volunteer, I'm gonna make you, give you access real quick. Um, I just want, 
you to double check this so we have like so it's fair. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Okay, so you should have. Um, so now, if you hit that link, you should you should maybe refresh it, and then you should see a and make sure you voted because you do get to vote uh, as a resident. Um, but see that that circle in the bottom right after refreshing. That means you can like edit. Do you see that, Michael? Uh, no, I'm looking. I refresh my page, and I'm not. I'm not seeing. Are you logged in? Are you logged in as a uh, via your OPNA email? Uh, you know, probably not. Let me try this. Let's okay. See. Sorry, all, but this is important. <laughs> right, right. Got to get this part right. Uh, let's see. Hold on. If if we if this is too hard, what we could I could just share my screen for transparency, and we could just look at the results too. Um, just just do that. I think yeah, that's that's fine. All righty. Everybody ready? Three, Ready. two, one. Hooray! Everybody made it. <laughs> Everybody made it. <laughs> awesome. And again, this isn't a popularity contest, so don't be... <laughs> hey, just out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, uh, the only way someone could not win is if they get zero votes. Is that correct? Well, if they get a, if they do not get a majority of votes. Okay. So if, any, if anyone got actually five or less, then okay. it would out of 10 votes. Well, we have nine responses. So that's actually, so yeah, if it, if it were be, four four yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys all made it. Nice. <laughs> Great. Well, we're really excited to welcome two new board members to the team. Dave and Rosie. Thank you very much. I look forward to getting to know everyone and, uh, and working with everyone. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. Um, we can't wait. Um, okay. Well, we have two minutes for just like some quick announcements. Uh, and I know Bishop, you had something, something very big, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, most that don't know me, I'm Bishop Chris Baker, and due to redistricting, I am now in District 5. I was originally District 8, and uh, looking forward to working with Jay Chenier. But basically what I'm on for is I help bring a grocery store to my area, which is Food for Less, mm. which is on the store on Broadway in Stockton, and that store is slated to be open March the 2nd. Ooh. And it's going to be some fabulous things going on there. Hot counters for uh, like Latino food, Chinese food. They, they want to work in a very diverse culture to provide for that community. And uh, I was involved with helping them get the store in uh, Rancho Cordova, Rio Linda, this Ooh. one here. And we're also looking at two other sites. And... Uh, I'm just informed that I am their executive ambassador for their Sacramento stores. So <laughs> if, if you have any questions, feel free. I put my email in there. And again, looking forward to working in that part of District 5. I know a lot of people down there. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. Cool. Yeah, we're excited to have a grocery store in the neighborhood again. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, any other announcements? Michael Blair, do you have any announcements? Anything about vaccination, upcoming vaccinations? Booster shots? I actually do. Let me um, share my screen real quick. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Where did it go? Give me one second. Let me try to pull this up. I don't think I got it this time. I, I put in the chat just a link to our Oak Park Cares program. Luis, Luis uh, referred to this, but we've actually given away over $10,000 to Oak Park residents since the summer uh, via this mutual aid program um, in the form of $200 direct payments to help folks with their rent, bills, et cetera. Uh, we're really excited about that program and it's made possible by some really great contributors. Um, including Perfect Union, PG&E, um, and residents uh, of both Oak Park and Curtis Park, who have been gen really generous contributors. So, and we made a little investment as well of our, our modest funds <laughs> from OPNA. Okay, um, sorry, I'm trying to make this a full screen, but it's not working with me. So anyway, I hope everybody can see this. Mm -hmm. this yeah. Yeah. 
Construction and Trade Awareness Career Fair. And what this is, is it's a little different than just like your typical job fair in that this will actually have a whole lot of unions that actually will come out and do hands-on for folks. So um, this is the second one that we're doing. And the last one, uh, the we invited the community out. And this happened in Del Paso Heights. This time it's going to be closer to Oak Park at the Fruit Ridge Community Collaborative. And we're going to have uh, just the whole community come out and, and be able to see exactly what pipe fitters do, what heat metalists do, uh, actually get them blow torches and, and make some stuff, make toolboxes, make pencil holders, all kinds of stuff. Because we want to give folks a, an opportunity to see, you know, really what happens on the job site. Um, speak to some folks directly that, you know, work in this lane and, and are in this industry and, and be able to tell them how much it's growing and what their experience is. And then be able to, you know, walk away with some, some in-depth knowledge and knowing that, um, you know, kind of knowing of more possibilities out there. There's tons of construction going on. I mean, we know about Aggie Square, but that's just one project um, where the old Arco Arena is. That's going to be the CNU Hospital. Um, that's going to be huge. Uh, and there's other just major projects going on all over the place. Construction is a great industry. And we want to, especially the young folks, you know, get them into something because not everybody wants to go to college, right? So we're saying, hey, come on out. We're going to have all these different vendors here that you can see. So not just the unions, but also just in independent uh, builders that are coming out and just be able to, you know, give, give folks a real in-depth perspective of, you know, day in the life of the construction worker. And as you see, it says men and women at work. The construction industry is really on the top level, the executive level, mainly all white males. And then as you get into the other, the kind of lower levels of it, you have um, the Hispanics who have done well in, in integrating into the uh, industry, but you have pretty much Hispanic and white. So what the industry wants to do is just diversify even more, and especially with women, because there's just not enough women. So they're really hungry to have women come in. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you, out on the job sites, a lot of the men don't want the women there. So some of these women have a pretty tough time navigating. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, we want them to be able to really network and connect in uh, so that they can get, you know, opportunity for success and be able to come into the industry, um, you know, with the right kind of knowledge. So anyway, that's going to be February 25th. I'll make sure we post that out on the OPNA page and all the other local social media pages as well for folks to be able to share and come and participate. Thank you. All right. Any other announcements? Um, I'm sorry, one more. And that the vaccine clinics, I don't have the flyer up right now, but uh, lots of vaccine clinics going on in the Oak Park area and the um, Oak Park Community Center Still got them going there. And newly uh, location is the Fruit Ridge Community Collaborative on Fridays from two to six. And I'll also be posting that because I think the new flyer is out with the updated uh, dates and times, but I'll be posting that out as well. And uh, so anyway, we're looking to get more vaccinations going on in this area. We did a heat map because uh, we're working with the, uh, with the state actually and they have these great maps that, you know, all the counties connect up into and they're able to, you know, really drill down on certain populations and see what's going on. And in Central Oak Park, it's still considered a red area, meaning, um, you know, low vaccination rates. Mm -hmm. So we want to we wanna do what we can to lift that up. And that makes um, FRCC a, a good location, but then also we're in talks, Cassandra was on earlier. We're actually in talks with her to try to set another one up at uh, St. Hope. I'm, I'm sorry, that's uh, Sac High. And so anyway, trying to uh, make sure that we have the connectivity and the availability here in Oak Park. Um, many of you may have remembered, I think it was about maybe six months ago now or maybe longer that uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services uh, for for the nation, Javier Becerra came out and that was the initiative. He said, hey, Biden sent me out here to come into low-income communities to figure out how can we bring resources here to make sure folks can get vaccinated. So that's what this whole effort is about. And we've been pushing hard 
working with UC Davis, trying to make this happen and, and create that awareness. Be looking for those flyers. Thanks. All right, last call for announcements. Okay, my my uh, my partner is doing a mirror. She works for Miraday, which is a plant nursery uh, place, and we're doing a pop up at our house on Sunday. So if you want to stop by, buy some native plants, come come on by. <laughs> nice. Okay, well we're we're past time. Um, really appreciate everybody's time, and welcome to the new board members. We'll be we'll be getting all oriented soon. Um, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Bye. Have a Bye. great rest of your evening. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.